Hey guys, today's video, I'm making my own composite steering wheel. This project started, well, the thought of it started um, back when I started modifying a wheel to be cut top. I thought, you know, I, I'm kind of limited as to what I can do. And um, I've made a couple of um, interesting uh, uh, ergonomic handles for different things over the years. And I've worked with some composites and I thought, I'm going to see what I can do with composites. Uh, also, I purchased a number of used steering wheels off of eBay, and I figured, you know, I'll take one of those steering wheels and do some experimentation with it. So it's that thought process that led me to this series of videos. Okay, so in this part of the steering wheel project, I want to show you the material I'm going to be using. Now, you can remake this hoop in a number of different ways. In this, uh, for the purposes of today's video, I'm going to be using, I'm going to be making the hoop out of an extremely strong composite called G10. And um, this is a, um, it's a composite material. It is, uh, it's more resilient than fiberglass, meaning it, it, uh, it won't crack as easily, but it's not quite as strong as carbon fiber. This happens to be a half inch thick. I have three panels of this half inch thick uh, G10. And um, so I'm gonna stack it three panels thick and cut the steering wheel shape out of it. So the way to do that first is to cover it with masking tape so that I can, I can draw on it. Then I'll lay the steering wheel on, trace out the steering wheel. Then I will, I will um, draw out the new shape of what I want the, the next steering wheel to look like. So, um, yeah, it will be, uh, all three layers will be screwed together and um, it will be more like the, um, the sketch that Tesla released, which is a flat bottom to a curve and then it stops. So it'll be an oval shape missing the top section. So let's get into it. One of the reasons that I want to use this uh, <clears throat> composite material is um, I could make this hoop out of metal, and I, there's a possibility I still might, but I, in order to make it thick-walled enough to make it strong, uh, it would be, uh, I would not have the capability to bend it. And I don't want it just curved all the way around. I'd like it curved and then straight here with a slight angle inward and then curved again. Those very tight curves I'd have to cut and weld a tube in those in angles like that and though I could do that and it would probably have a kind of a cool look to it I wanted it to be more smooth and curved and I can easily cut that out of this composite now buying this composite in an inch and a half uh, thick uh, section would um, I I haven't been able to find it that thick in this size. Now, I didn't do a huge amount of research, but the thicker you go, the more expensive this stuff gets. So, and I actually had this half inch thick material from other projects. So it's, uh, you can cut this with a, uh, a handheld saber saw with a masonry bit, and I'll show you that uh, when I start cutting it. But uh, cutting a half inch thick piece is doable cutting an inch and a half thick piece would take a very long time so i'd rather cut multiple half inch pieces and join them together uh, and this will actually have uh, more strength than the aluminum core and i'll show you that of the original wheel the aluminum core if you cut through an original model 3 steering wheel uh, this is the core on the inside you can see the foam wrapped around an aluminum section which is about three quarters of an inch or would that be maybe 18 to 18 or so millimeters in height and less width uh, and this inch this composite material stacked three pieces thick at an inch and a half would actually be stronger than the aluminum core of the original wheel
So now that I've got the, uh, the wheels sketched, I can alter this um, design to what I want to cut out. made an error I'm gonna start over on the back side um, I want to change the uh, the width slightly so I'm gonna start over and draw it from the back side here So I got a couple of couple of bowls to use uh, to trace uh, to trace curves that I want within the wheel. I think this one will be about perfect. So there's the shape of the new wheel. Now, not sure how accurately you can see that, but these sides tip in slightly. They're not perfectly vertical. And um, <clears throat> so uh, that is um, just a little bit more ergonomic shape. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Oh, and a um, bit of information, the wheel is 14 inches wide and the height is 10 inches high. So 10 high, 14 wide, I feel that's a good compromise to be um, exotic and, and kind of cool looking but still be uh, very functional and ergonomic and usable. Now the next step is to sacrifice a steering wheel take this all apart and cut down to see what we've got to uh, to mount my new wheel to what uh, what material there is to um, to grab onto uh, to bolt onto underneath uh, these sections here so we'll get to that next
So there's the bare wheel. We'll go ahead and cut off the upholstery. So what you do is cut off all the stitching and then just pull the pull the cover off. It's glued down in sections, so it can be a little hard to get off, but you just pull hard and peel it off. So there we go. Just like a snake skin. So we'll set that aside. Makes quite a mess here. So what you wanna what I wanna do now is get through this rubber. Now this this spoke is just rubber. This third spoke at the bottom. That's that doesn't support any weight. What it does is it houses the back side here. This is the steering wheel CPU. So that's what is housed in that bottom spoke. But the bottom spoke doesn't do any actual support of the wheel. It is it's just rubber. The aluminum forging or casting, I should say, goes out to the hoop through these sections here. So I'm going to proceed to um, to get down to this material. But I, first, I'm going to go ahead and cut this uh, cut this part of the wheel off in the bandsaw. There's the top section and if you just wanted to cut the top of the wheel off that's one way to do it now you could cut it off this way but I chose to follow the the molded um, seam line in the rubber there just for grins see the aluminum core there so now we will um, I'll cut it uh, cut it here and then remove it from this foam section while trying to keep the foam section somewhat intact There's that section. Now I'm going to carefully trim around here to try and leave this some of this foam section protruding down. So there's that last section there, and uh, left a raw area down at the bottom, but we'll we'll deal with dressing that uh, later. In fact, I'll go ahead and show you. I'll belt sand this down, and I'll show you how, how nicely this foam can shape for you. So you can see how well the uh, this rubber actually uh, actually forms. Uh, it's not perfect. I still have to do more work, but the belt sander just smooths it out real nice, and um, you can shape it. So I'll focus on making that more perfect later. Now theoretically. You could, you could leave the wheel like this and uh, just cover the sides and, uh, and have kind of a neat space age, more fighter jet type steering wheel, but I really want to curve it in, shorten it up and curve it in and angle the sides. So that's what I'm working on. So I'm going to grind this rubber down to the metal and see where we're at here.
So you can see there, there's the skeleton of the wheel. I can get some good light angle on it there. So there's the casting. So now I'm going to remove this rubber here to see what we would have to grab onto for the to mount the new wheel. So you can see here that uh, this is what the material looks like um, ground down and um, so there's the back side and um, you can see that the casting they have um, they have uh, a matrix shape uh, cast into it that the rubber bonds to but this is all solid aluminum here and um, the uh, the thickness is uh, let's see a little over three quarters of an inch thick there or uh, about uh, just shy of 20 millimeters and in this dimension we're looking at 12.8 millimeters or uh, about a half inch or so so plenty of material to work with and um, I found that the easiest way to remove this rubber is with a normal bench top stone grinding wheel and um, it worked really, really well, and then a, a Dremel with the drum wheel to get the rest of the way down. So this is plenty of material to bolt the, uh, the new composite steering wheel to. The composite wheel will, will capture around this. You won't see this at all. The composite wheel will be uh, multiple layers, and it will bolt through this. I'm going to leave plenty of aluminum to, uh, to bolt the, the composite wheel to to give it strength, and the composite wheel will be stronger than the original hoop that Tesla included here. So looking forward to it. Um, this is a project I've been wanting to work on for a while. And um, so this is an OEM development project for a client that I've been working on. There's another large project in a crate behind it that's being shipped out. I've had a lot of stuff going on, so been kind of busy. So anyway, um, I'm hoping to continue working on this. The next video, I'll have all of this rubber removed. I'll be cutting the composite uh, wheel section and begin that part of the process. So anyway, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, let me know if you guys have any questions and um, you know, what, uh, what you'd like to see from me in the future. So thanks a lot, guys. Take it easy now. Bye-bye.